Practically every industry requires a certain amount of work to be done above ground level. Often, when work is performed in elevated locations, portable ladders or scaffolds are used. Ladders and scaffolds are designed to help workers reach areas that are ordinarily out of reach. However, since they enable personnel to work at elevated heights, both ladders and scaffolds can pose a safety hazard if they aren't used properly. Ladders are a common sight at many industrial facilities and construction jobs. A number of different types of ladders are available. The specific type that's used depends on the job being done. Three basic types of portable ladders are straight ladders, extension ladders, and step ladders. A straight ladder is the simplest of the three basic types of ladders. It consists of two rails with cross pieces called rungs between them. The rungs are used as steps to climb the ladder. At the bottom of the rails are safety feet, which help prevent the ladder from slipping when it's in use. An extension ladder is basically an assembly of two overlapping straight ladders. The amount of overlap between the two sections can be adjusted to change the overall length of the ladder to match the needs of a particular job. The third type of ladder is a step ladder. It's a self-supporting portable ladder that's made up of two sections hinged at the top. The section that's used for climbing consists of rails and rungs similar to those found on a straight ladder. The main difference is that the rungs on a step ladder are actually flat steps. Safety feet at the bottom of the rails help prevent the ladder from slipping. The other section of the ladder consists of rails and braces. The braces are designed to support the rails. They should never be used for climbing. Hinged arms, called spreaders, located between the two sections, stabilize the ladder and prevent it from folding up while it's being used. When a step ladder is properly positioned, a stable triangular shape is formed. Besides being available in different materials, ladders also vary in size and load-bearing capabilities. A standard rating system is used as the basis for dimensions and weight limits. The rating system classifies all portable ladders into one of four basic categories or types. One category is type 1A. Ladders in this category have a maximum load-bearing capacity of 300 pounds. Type 1A ladders are suitable for extra heavy-duty applications, such as those found in industry, utilities, contracting, and so forth. The second category is Type 1. Type 1 ladders have a maximum load-bearing capacity of 250 pounds. Ladders in the Type 1 category are used in heavy-duty applications, similar to those for which Type 1A ladders are used. The third category is Type 2. Ladders in the Type 2 category have a maximum load-bearing capacity of 225 pounds. Type 2 ladders are medium-duty ladders commonly used in offices for light maintenance and in similar applications. The fourth category is Type 3. Type 3 ladders have a maximum load-bearing capacity of 200 pounds. Ladders in the Type 3 category are light-duty ladders typically used for light household jobs. Ladders are commonly used to enable personnel to work in elevated locations. But any time work is performed above ground level, there's an increased risk of an accident. To reduce the chance of an accident associated with using a ladder, some basic safety guidelines should be followed. In this part of the program, we'll identify some of the basic safety considerations that apply to straight ladders, extension ladders, and step ladders. We'll also look at how to select and use the proper type of ladder for a job. Ladder safety begins with choosing the proper type of ladder for the job. A number of basic factors should be considered when a ladder is selected. One of the first things to consider is how long the ladder must be to reach the area where work is to be done. All types of portable ladders have length limits. For example, step ladders can't be any longer than 20 feet. 
Plus, the recommended highest standing level of a stepladder is less than the ladder's total length. The recommended highest standing level is the vertical distance from the uppermost rung or step that the climber should use to the horizontal plane of the ladder base support with the ladder properly positioned. So make sure that the ladder you choose is long enough to allow you to safely reach the work area. Another factor to consider when you're choosing a ladder is what kind of ladder is best suited for the job. In other words, should you use a straight ladder, an extension ladder, or a step ladder? Often, determining the kind of ladder to use depends on whether the ladder will be leaned against a structure or if it needs to be freestanding. Determining how much weight the ladder will need to support is also important. Ladders are rated to support different amounts of weight, so you have to know the total amount of weight that the ladder will need to bear which includes the weight of the person climbing the ladder plus the weight of any tools and supplies that the person might be carrying. The material that the ladder is made of must also be taken into consideration when a ladder is selected. For example, metal ladders aren't suitable for jobs near electrical lines. Fiberglass or wood ladders are a better choice since fiberglass and dry wood won't conduct electricity. Once a suitable ladder has been selected, it can be inspected and put to use. To get a better understanding of how a ladder should be used, we'll watch a worker use an extension ladder to reach a work area near a building's roof. Many of the basic guidelines that apply to using an extension ladder are the same as those that apply to a straight ladder. After determining that a fiberglass extension ladder is best suited for the job, the worker lifts the ladder from a storage rack so that he can inspect it for any obvious problems. He checks the ladder's rungs and rails, and he makes sure that the rope that's used to raise the movable section isn't worn or frayed. He also checks the rung locks to make sure that they're working correctly, and he verifies that the safety feet are in good shape. After he finishes the inspection, he carries the ladder to the work area. Along the way, he's careful not to hit anyone or anything with the ladder. Ladders can be heavy and awkward to carry. Sometimes it's necessary to get help carrying them. As the worker positions the ladder at the job site, he makes sure that the feet are securely set and that the narrow section of the ladder is at the top. He adjusts the length of the ladder from the bottom where he can clearly see the rung locks. One of the most important rules to remember when you're using a straight ladder or an extension ladder is to maintain the correct ladder angle. We can see how to establish that angle using this illustration. When a ladder is placed against a wall or other support structure, the distance between the wall and the base of the ladder should be one-fourth the working length of the ladder. The working length is the distance between the base of the ladder and the point where the top of the ladder makes contact with the wall. The working length is measured along the ladder's rails. If the base of the ladder is placed too far from the wall, the ladder could slip out from under you. If the base is placed too close to the wall, there's a chance that the ladder could tip over backwards. With the ladder in place, the worker makes sure that he has all the necessary tools for the job. He carries the tools in a tool belt to keep his hands free for climbing. Then he slowly climbs the ladder, using both hands to hold on to the side rails or rungs. He keeps his body close to the ladder so that he doesn't tip over backwards. In this case, the worker will perform the work from the ladder. If he needed to step off of the ladder onto the roof, he'd have to make sure that the ladder's side rails extended beyond the top of the roof by at least 36 inches. As he performs the work, he's careful to maintain his balance and not reach or lean too far to the side or back. If he needs to move the ladder, he'll climb down first, then move it. When he finishes the job, he climbs back down the ladder, again using both hands on the side rails or rungs. He doesn't slide down the ladder, and he doesn't turn around to climb down. He then lowers the ladder, 
checks it to make sure that it's clean and in good condition, and returns it to its proper storage place.